uh, the, uh, it's that time of the week where Leon usually talks about money and I'm going to do exactly the same thing today. We've got a bit of a special show. Financial planner and now author Luke Smith from Envision Financial. Today is the official launch of the book, The Smart Money Strategy, uh, your ultimate guide to financial planning. And let me bring to the microphone the aforementioned Mr. Luke Smith. Mr. Luke, how are you? Mate, really good. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. Yeah, look, it's been uh, it's been a bit of a journey. Um, I, it's one of those things that if you knew what was involved in something before you did it, you'd probably think twice about undertaking it. So there'd been we're, some... we're, we're pretty ordinary at financial planning, most of us, aren't we? Well, I was more referring to writing a book. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But no, you, you, you've hit the nail on the head there too. I think it's one of those things that people mean to get to, yeah. but then ne don't necessarily do. Um, and I often find it in other facets of people's lives as well, where I'll ask someone, oh, have you got a will? Oh, we've been meaning to do that since the kids were born. Oh, how old are the kids? They're 40. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, I think, and I think planning in a general sense is one of those things that just gets consumed by life and kids and work and careers and education and all those other things that are a more pressing priority. Yep. And as people start to get older, especially that, that awareness of, oh, hang on a sec, I just turned 50. How do I get here? Mm. Oh, I should start looking at that. Yeah. And I should think about this. What is there an age at which to start thinking about your financial um, future? And look, I'm hoping you're going to say over 18. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's probably a couple of key triggers. It's one, you know, you start working and accumulating some income. Yeah. Um, that's always a, a time to start. And I think the most important thing people can do is just do a little something a little sooner. If they did nothing more than that, it starts those good behaviours when you're younger. If you save a little bit, you invest a little bit and you do something proactively in a limited capacity with the resources you have coming straight out of school, get your first job. You don't have to go gung-ho into doing one and everything. Yeah. Just do something, do it consistently, repeat it, automate it, repeat it, automate it. And over time, you'll find that something very small compounded into something much larger a lot faster than you realise. So the sooner you can start, the more opportunity you have to take advantage of time. And I think that really gives you the basis for being able to do something of choice. I say it's a good looking book. It's a nice looking book. It's a smart money strategy. Mm -hmm. Your ultimate guide to financial planning. Now, of those three words you've used in the title, smart money strategy, which is the most important? I would have thought strategy. I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think for me, that's and that's how we try to approach the book because a lot of people can get analysis paralysis. And what I mean by that is you can get caught up in the weeds of looking at this and that and this and that and this and one of those and one of these and two of these and one of those and my friend did this and my cousin did that and the ladies at work do this to the point where you end up doing nothing. Mm. And I think from a strategic standpoint, the best thing people can do is start to learn about what their options are. So we, we tried to write the book and say, no matter what stage of life you're at, whether you've just got your first job and trying to buy your first home, there are some strategies to address there. Okay. It might be saving, yep. it might be budgeting, it might be things that you do at a younger age. We have strategies in the middle of the book where you might have had your career for quite a while. Now you have a partner and you have a home and you have two kids and you're trying to pay down a mortgage, you're trying to build up a little bit of super and you move into that more mature part of your working career. So we've got strategies that are in that section. And then we've got that later part of your career where now you're starting to realise, oh, now I am 55 and ooh, I wouldn't mind slowing down to 60. And we've got those retirement planning strategies that help you maximise your super, minimise your tax, manage cash flow, help out the kids, buy investment properties and look at incomes and pensions and ways to fund yourself when you do decide to either slow down your work hours or pull stumps all together and, and put your feet up and go fishing every day. So there's there's a little bit of something in there for everybody, regardless of where you're at in the journey. It's incredibly complex these days, isn't it? I mean, if you go yeah. back half a century or so, you know, your financial security yeah. was uh, you know, usually the pension, mm -hmm. or if you had, uh, if you were smart with your money along the yeah. way, you had a couple of properties, or yeah. you had you know, some, uh, some interest-bearing deposits in Correct. your bank, which actually did so. Yeah. Um, they, uh, 
it, it's so complicated now. The advice is so confusing, often conflicting. Do you, do you find that? Um, I, I think it, the, the legislation has made it extremely difficult. It changes all the time too, which make it writing a book really hard. I would have thought you're going to keep going back and you'd, revising you'd, it. You'd be amazed how many times those numbers oh, have been I'm, revised. I probably <laughs> wouldn't actually. But I think I think you're spot on. I think yeah. it is very difficult to work out a clear and succinct approach because there are so many options and so many structures and so many vehicles and so many things that are available now, which can both be a good and a bad thing. Yeah. But I think, again, you need to come down and look at things. For me, it's always about what's our strategy, what's our structure, and then what are our investments? Because I look at investments really like the wheels on the car. Mm. Tradies drive utes for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. They don't drive minis. That's not to say minis aren't great cars, but tradies drive utes because they are fit for purpose. And that's where I say, What's our strategy? What's our why? Find your why and come backwards from there. Then we say, what's our structure? Where do we do it? Mm. Do we do it in a trust? Do we do it in joint names? Do we do it in superannuation? And then what do we buy in relation to achieving the why? Is it shares? Is it property? Is it rentals? Is it commercial? Is it fixed interest? Is it term deposits? Really, it's if you come at it in that order, the strategic benefit of being prepared can be very, very flexible in relation to then what's available to me in the open market, what are the products we could use, mm. and are they appropriate for me achieving my why? One of the things that uh, I hear back just in casual conversation, talking to friends, you know, colleagues, etc., is, oh, look, I'd love to get it into some kind of investment, but I just don't have the money now. How much mm. do you need to start? Um, look, I don't think you need anything. I think with technology and apps and things like that, there are a number of um, phone-based apps that young kids can tied to a credit card and they can round up transactions, you can save regularly. You can also now get into retail investment structures um, through things like Vanguard with a very, very low entry price of let's say 5,000 total. And then you can save and build into those positions as well. So there are a lot of low level entry options that are there for you. And you can also then take advantage of various structures depending on the capacities that you have. And I think the best thing somebody can do is just start. Just kick it off, commit to it set up a regular direct debit with a little bit of what you can potentially save and then forget about it. And I'm a big advocate of automation. One of the themes in the book is to have a goal, to have a, mm. sp a specific set of outcomes that you're working towards. That is critical. How do you form that way back in the beginning of the process? Well, I think it's about sitting down and actually having an honest conversation between yourself and somebody that's helping you or yourself and your partner and saying, well, what are the things that are most important to us? because we all have different priorities that then influence the way that we manage our time and, and the focus that we put to different things. And if you can have a, a, a very clear objective that is, okay, what is my why? You know, and, I, and I use that, well, why are we doing this? Mm. Because if you have a target and a goal, you're then more likely to be able to drive towards that by using active behaviors to achieve it. So I think if you've got clarity and you've got a target like anything, I think you're far more focused, you're far more engaged, and you've got a greater chance of actually getting to where you need to go, rather than just freewheeling it without any clear direction, because I think that's when people get lost in the process, mm -hmm. or they become disengaged and go, oh, that was too hard. Well, you didn't commit to it, and like most things, well, it didn't double overnight, so, oh, that hasn't worked, I'll, I'll move on to something else. I think consistency and repetition, whether it's working on your finances, working on your golf swing, working on your soccer, your cricket, your tennis, your biomen, yeah. repetition, 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 and before you know it, you're really good at it, um, and sometimes you actually enjoy it a lot more. The strategies that you would employ um, to generate some sort of financial security for yourself, they, they change as you get older, don't they? So yeah. the strategies for somebody in their 20s would be vastly different from the strategies that somebody might put in place that was in their 40s. Exactly right, and I think that's where we've tried to stack those strategies, and you know, we talk in the book about stacking strategies, so you might look at those younger strategies where it might be to budget, to save, to pay down your home, to use an offset account, yeah. and, and build on those, and then in the middle of your life, you might turn around and say, well, I've got a little bit more cash flow now, the kids have finished studying, I've got some free money that I can use to build super, buy an investment property, to use a family trust, to add to superannuation, and then you build through that middle part of your working life and your career. And then at the end, you've got strategies to say, well, now I've done a great job of filling it up. How do I get it out? Yeah. 
and then you might have part-time work, transition to retirement, account-based pensions, and all of those various income stream considerations that allow you to put your feet up a little bit more often, get out of the workforce and actually spend some time doing the things you really enjoy. I'm, uh, I'm talking to Luke Smith from Envision Financial, who's written his first book, which I want to come back to the process of, of getting from what you've been doing for the mm. past, you know, ever, uh, to becoming an author, because they're quite different processes in mm. so many different ways. The, uh, the book we're talking about is Smart Money Strategy, Your Ultimate Guide to Financial Planning. It's been released by Wiley, which is a fabulous publisher for these yes. sorts of, uh, these sorts mm. of books. And uh, he, Luke, is the, you would well know, host of the popular podcast, The Strategy Stacker. We're going to take a, a quick break here at 13 to 5, and we'll come back and uh, just talk a little more about the book, a little more about strategies, a little more about some of the things that might help you to be very comfortable at the back end of your life rather than nervous and uh, and deeply distressed, which many people are. Uh, Luke is with me in the studio. Hang in there. We will come back in just a moment. And it's a big day for Luke today. He has launched today the Smart Money Strategy, your ultimate guide to financial planning. And uh, Luke is, as you know, the host of the popular podcast, The Strategy Stacker. And he joins me in the studio, as is uh, normally the case with Leon. How hard was it to go from being a 23-year financial planner, advisor, mm -hmm. to being an author? Um... I think it's one of those things that you, it sneaks up on you. You know, 23 years in an industry, um, you, you blink and go, I, I, you know, I can't believe that's happened. Tell me about it, yeah. <laughs> well, no, well, actually, let me, let, me re let me rephrase the question. Yeah. What caused you to think writing a, good, uh, writing a book would be a really good idea? Well, I, I think there's a huge need for um, information. And I think with the way that legislation's changed, and the way that the government have made things more and more difficult to actually get the advice. Mm. I think there's a huge void in the middle for people out there that want to try and just improve their education, either help their kids, help themselves, or get a better general understanding of the options that are available to them. Because some people will come and get advice, other people will stay at home and do it themselves. And I think people need to try and educate themselves because what we learn at school and the things that we're taught generally aren't of a financial nature. And I think superannuation, managing cash flow, saving, buying properties, and taking advantage of simple strategies over your working life, even if you used one or two very, very well, mm. can make a massive difference over time to the choices that you can make for the into retirement. So we wanted to write something for people that is not product related. There is, there is not a single product in that book okay. because we have That's nothing good. to sell. Yeah, yeah. It's just strategy. And how do you put the strategies together? And then how do you, as we said before the ever, how do you move through those phases of your life and adapt your strategies to your changing situation? So that, and that's where the, the, the stacking language came from because you get a good foundation. And like anything in life, you start stacking things on top of it as you move down the road of whatever it is you're doing. So we took that same principle and applied it to finance because it's an ever evolving environment in people's situations, lives, incomes, assets, debts, interest rates, all those things impact what you do over time. So we try to give people the strategic information that you would get from a financial planner. You can get it now from you know, your lounge room um, with a glass of wine and go back and read it again and read it again and read Highlight it again. Highlight the bits that are relevant to exactly. you. Exactly, and we've, that, we've yeah. put the, the, the index cards down the side of the book. So you, can, you can jump straight to the super section or the pension section or whatever it is that, that gets your attention that might be the most pressing thing for you at the moment. You can jump to that and then focus on it and build out those strategies and see how they come together over time. One of the things I do like about it, in contrast to many books um, um, on a, you know, a range of different fields, reading it is eye glazing. You, the terminology is complicated. The mechanisms that that terminology you don't understand, uh, that's mm. describing you don't understand them either. And eventually you just sort of give up. This yeah. is written really easily. And when you need to define what a bunch of terms are, mm. you go off in a little section and define what the term means. This yeah. is what we're actually talking about. Yeah. And it, it's just that it'd be highly useful for anybody going into I mean, year 10 economics. You could do yeah. you could do yourself a lot worse than reading that book. Yeah, I think you're spot on. I think it gives people a basic foundation of what things really mean. Because one of the things I see with clients coming in all the time is the misconception of what a rule is, what a piece of legislation allows, what you can and can't do, yep. and when it may or may not be used. 
and that's generally influenced by talk around the water cooler at work or walking down the fairway on a golf course on a Saturday. And an electrician might say to a plumber, oh, you can do this. But that'd be like me holding on to, you know, a, a, any sort of power tool. Everybody knows me, that's the most dangerous thing on the earth. So you just got to sort of yeah. go to a source of truth. And that's what we try to provide for people so they can educate themselves and benefit over time. It's one of those books I would imagine too that would benefit, uh, uh, not benefit from, but be able to be updated. As oh, as the second edition will be, oh, the law, this law has changed over that time and the rules and regulations regarding X are now different, here's the change. Yeah, with, with the way that the government is stepping into the industry and, and keeps stepping in the industry, we could be updating that every six months. Fantastic. <laughs> Luke, <laughs> please don't go there. Please, um, please don't make me do that. <laughs> Luke Smith is the man you've been listening to for the past 20 minutes or so. He's the host of the popular podcast, The Strategy Stacker, his brand new book out today. Smart Money Strategy, your ultimate guide to financial planning, and it's available at uh, all the great places, isn't it? Yeah, Dix, yeah. QBD, Harry Hartog, um, Booktopia, Amazon. Yes, Booktopia, Amazon, that's right, exactly. Fantastic. So, you right. can get an electronic copy, they'll send it out. We've got it in the bookstores. Um, grab, yourself, out there for everybody. grab yourself a copy. The, uh, the news on 2CC is next. Luke Smith, great to meet you. Pleasure. Thanks, bro.